Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarino and today's lesson will be about mass and volume. First some definitions. Mass. Mass is defined as the amount of matter that you can find in an object. As it is, mass is therefore given by the number and type of molecules that are inside that object and also by the relative arrangement of these molecules. The base unit for mass is the kilogram, symbol kg. Although for practical purposes, most of the time in class we will use a subunit, the gram, symbol g. As you will see later, mass can be measured using a balance. We're going to use digital balances or mechanical like double pan or, or triple arm balances. And here's the volume. So the volume is defined as the quantity of space that an object occupies. So, in few words, mass is how much stuff there is in an object and the volume is how big the object is. Now, how about the units for mass, if a volume? If, if you remember, we saw that the base unit for length is a meter, symbol m. It's easy to figure out that the base unit for surface is a square meter, symbol m2. And therefore, the unit, the base unit for volume in the international system of units will be the cubic meter. Now it's important to see how we can convert from the base unit to the subunits of volume. And it's not as easy as it was for the base unit for length. And this is why. First of all, as I told you previously, the base unit for mass is a kilogram, but we're going to measure most of the time masses in grams. In the same fashion, the base unit for volume is a cubic meter, but most of the time we're going to use, for, pra for uh, simplicity, the cubic centimeter. And we need to learn how to transform measurements in cubic meters into cubic centimeters and vice versa. Now, one meter is a hundred centimeter or in using the powers of ten, ten to the power of two centimeters. A square meter is given by one meter times one meter. It's a square with a side of one meter. If you convert this in centimeter, one meter is a hundred centimeter, one meter is a hundred centimeter, so one meter times one meter is one hundred centimeter times one hundred centimeter, and that makes ten thousand square centimeters, or using the powers of ten, ten to the power of four square centimeters. In the same way, we can find out how many cubic centimeters are in one cubic meter. One cubic meter is a volume of a cube with a side of one meter. So it's one meter times one meter times one meter, which means a hundred centimeters times a hundred centimeters times a hundred centimeters. And that makes a million cubic centimeters. Or, using the powers of ten, ten to the power of six cubic centimeters. So you can imagine a box, a cubic box with a side of a one meter can be filled with one million smaller cubes with a side of one centimeter. So a cubic meter is actually a very big unit, it's a very big volume. Now, there are some questions related to mass and volume. In principle, one would think that a larger object will be always heavier than a smaller one. 
The answer is obviously no, and we're going to see that the answer lies in the definition of another quantity which is linked to mass and volume, and this quantity is density. In few words, it will be linked to how closely packed the molecules in that substance are. And I told you how we can find the mass, how we can measure the mass of an object. I didn't tell you how we're going to find the volume of an object. That will be the, um, the argument of another lesson. And actually, we're going to see how we're going to measure the volume of a liquid, of a solid with a regular shape, or of a solid with an irregular shape. So, for this lesson, what were the uh, learning goals? Obviously, they were define the mass and the volume of objects. So, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to tell what's the mass of an object, how you measure it, what's the unit, and what's the volume of an object. How you measure it, now actually, this you're going to learn later, and what's the unit. So, Next lesson will be about defining density. So answering that previous question, is it true that a heavier, a bigger object will be always heavier than a smaller one? And see how we can measure the volume of different type of objects.